my story is somewhat similar. Um, it's been a while since I even spoke of this, and actually I only spoke of it one time uh, uh, when this incident happened. And I'm not sure of how many people know I haven't spoke of it since the incident. I'm not sure of how many people my sister told this. But my dad was in the hospital. Unbeknownst to me, he was dying. I didn't know that. I, I just don't receive that. I didn't receive that. I was in denial. I was not so much in de denial. I still had hope. So that was the furthest thing from my mind. So in the hospital, me and my sister went to the hospital to visit him. And um, the story is somewhat a little bit about him, and I'll tell about him later. Um, that's going to take some doing to talk about him that particular story, but I'm going to switch over to the, the guy, the older guy in the bed next to him, and his name was Carl, and whatever ailment he had, I don't know what he had, whether it was cancer, I'm not really sure what, his, what the ailment was, but he was dying. And his facial expression was locked. His mouth was locked where it was locked open. The only one that I saw, and there was people visiting him, but um, his wife pretty much stayed with him. And a lot of things I learned afterwards, but when I was in the hospital visiting my dad, I. I was led to read him psalms, just the different psalms over and over, and talk to him. Um, unbeknownst to me, I spoke of death, and I, and I told him that the sting was taken out of death when Jesus died on the cross. And I was saying things that I really don't know why I was saying at that it wasn't a I didn't come there with the intent of saying those things, but I did know to read Psalms. I learned afterwards that his wife told me, we heard everything you said. I know she did. I always was told that the hearing is the last thing to go. I don't know, that's what I was told, and that kind of stuck with me. But anyway, getting back, they were listening to me. And so things were happening, and I didn't know what. Thing, things were happening, and my sister and I were both being in a room sometimes, and then when she wasn't in the room, she was in the area where the family members of Carl was there, and, and sometimes the wife, and then we heard different things, and we connected those things together and put the puzzle together. However, one day, when reading Psalms, I was just sitting there in my dad's room, and I knew that I knew that I knew it was like a voice, an inaudible voice telling me to say the sinner's prayer. So. So, I don't remember whether it was so they could hear it or, she, or that he, he could hear it. I, I, that part is fuzzy to me right now. If I really thought about it, uh, I would remember, but, you know, telling this story is a little emotional. So I got up in between my dad and Carl, and I started saying the sinner's prayer. And I was saying it like in the motion that I'm saying now. And inside, that small, still voice told me, slow down, say it slowly, so he can repeat it, or they can repeat it. Now, my dad was a Christian. He believed in the Lord. He, he, he loved the Lord. He read his Bible uh, uh, 
a whole lot. And he wasn't perfect, but he tried to practice the principles, the morals that he was supposed to. So I'm thinking, you know, I'm doing this in his prayer. Okay, if my dad need to repent about some things, okay. I'm really thinking it was for Carl, for Carl because of the coming events. Okay, so I hear that small, still voice tell me to slow down. So I did. And I went through the sinner's prayer. So in between, in the middle of what I'm saying, the prayer that I'm, I'm giving, my sister comes in and she just sits in the chair where I was sitting and she's just listening. So I'm continuing. And then it was the prayer, I finished it. We heard about three labored breathing, Carl's breathing. He, he took a breath. He took another breath. And then the last breath. At that time, his wife wasn't in the room, so me and my sister witnessed him dying. We witnessed him dead. The nurse comes in the room, me and my sister crying like we knew Carl all our life. We had just met him in the hospital while my dad was there. We told my brother-in-law, my brother-in-law, came into the room and we told him what happened. My sister had told me, I think the nurse was going to get the wife out of the waiting room or the cafeteria, I'm not sure. But my sister told me that she was, the son had just arrived in Arizona. I suppose the mother called him and said, you, you got to get here. So, He's with the mom at the time before he comes in with the dad, none of them knowing anything uh, as far as him dying. We were the first, my sister and I, to, to witness that. But my sister told me and her husband that the son said he threw his things in the car, as opposed to on his trip to California. And he heard an audible voice, not in his head, but out loud, and it said, it is finished. Now what I have to go back to is his wife, I heard conversations, and she had talked to the doctor, and I, I heard from conversations that the two of them, the husband and Car uh, her and Carl, her husband, had like a pact. If any of the any one of them went first, they do not want to be resuscitated. They do not want to be worked on. Just let them die. And so she was just concerned because he was on his deathbed, but it would seem to be taking a while. And so she even talked to the doctor about, is there anything you can do? And the doctor said, oh, no, we don't do that. And I don't know whether the doctor misunderstood or, you know, thinking euthanize him. I, I, I don't know what the doctor thought, but that's what I, I heard. And through... My, my sister, she was saying in the waiting room with the son, as far as I can remember, she was voicing her concern about the state of his soul. She was voicing his concern whether he was even ready spiritually to die. She was voicing her concern that of, of I don't know whether he was once a Christian and fell back or you know, what they call it, backslide, or whether he was ever a Christian, or she didn't, but she didn't know the, the status of where he was spiritually. I believe that's why I was told to say the sinner's prayer. And it's 
all, it's not by coincidence that when I finished that prayer, he took three breaths and then he was dead. Like, 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 like the son said he heard, it is finished. That's why he was lingering on. He needed to say those words. He needed to repent. He needed to, to ask for forgiveness in his mind. And he was straight. I believe that. I'll leave you to your conclusions, but I believe that. That that was my purpose for that day. Carl had to hear those words. Now my dad went on to live with my sister about three weeks afterwards. And that's another story. But I just wanted to bring that to you. Because it was things that was going on in the room. My dad would look out my set and say, and nobody was in the room but me and him and Carl next door and, and the wife. But it was a, 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 a curtain drawn. So Carl and my dad could not see each other. When I sat in a chair, I could look out and I could see both my dad, Carl, and Carl's wife. But my dad would say some, some things like, who are all those people? It's a party going on. And I would look at him like, okay, dad. I didn't understand till later. I believe the angels were celebrating. Now, you might call me foolish, but that's what I believe. The angels were celebrating. It was a party going on. So before I get too emotional, I'm going to end this right now. I didn't want it to be too lengthy. I wanted to tell you the beautiful parts of that. It was a beautiful day. Yes, Carl left this earth. But I believe at this very moment, he's with the king. So I'm going to end it for real this time. And as always, have a beautiful, blessed day. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.